Hey, Foot Clan, we have a great show for you today. A lot of injury updates to catch you up on, get you ready for the upcoming Bipocalypse Week. And we break down the matchups, give you starts of the week, and then continue the incredible story that Jason is telling with the Boom Boom Kicker. Make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, you leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous, invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. And Foot Clan, I want to tell you about Truebill. Look, how many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars because you forgot to cancel them? Well, you can fight back against scammy subscriptions with Truebill. And I, I'm just going to tell you, this is a really good app with yep. a very useful purpose in your life. You I've, basically... I've, I've been a subscriber way before they were a sponsor of this show. Yeah, it, it literally will. And it does it super fast. Yep. It scans your bank account. Um, it keeps, keeps track of the purchases that are being made. And it identifies every one of the subscriptions that you have. And what I thought was really cool is it actually, like, there's a button, and it says, cancel this for me. That's so nice. And so, like, I don't want to figure out how to cancel this subscription or that subscription. And you just go and push that button, and then they do it. I don't know how they do it, but they, they say, do it. Leave me alone. Le <laughs> that's, that's right. So uh, don't fall for subscription scams. You can start canceling today at Truebill.com slash footballers. Go right now, Truebill.com slash footballers. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was that? I was just getting, I was just. I know, but it was like a, yeah. It was a, <laughs> well, it was away from the microphone. It was a, yeah, but it was over here. It was a, yeah. I thought you were going to keep going. Like, yeah, just. Uh, on, on beat. Uh, not, a, not a good enough game. The, Wait for next week, and maybe next week's game will yeah. get me more hype. You sounded like. My my hype man, my number two, but you weren't really sure mm -hmm. if, if you, you agreed with what I was saying. Again, you got to wait for a better game. I mean, there's uh, you know there's some problems here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do I come in here? <laughs> Thursday, October twenty first, the fantasy footballers, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. Thank you for supporting the show, subscribing, reviewing, following on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening. Thank you very much. Maybe it's YouTube. Maybe it's YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Maybe you subscribe. Maybe you click the bell. Maybe the bell told you that we're here right now. Mm. That's a lot of maybes. Well, if, if all the maybes are true, thank you. Thank you very much. Twitter at the FF Ballers. We have never not working news to talk about, injury news. Mike said it at the top. We got a game tonight. We'll be getting into the bipocalypse matchup breakdowns. Less breakdowns this week than weeks in the past because so many guys are on by. Starts of the week on the show today. We got a lot to cover, and of course, the boom, boom, the boom, boom, the boom, boom, the next chapter <laughs> in the story. Oh my gosh! Are you going to write a book after all this? Oh, I've already got a he's, massive he's publishing deal. <laughs> I mean, the amount of uh, total words in this book, I guess, is more of a children's book. Yeah, but not a, not a really good one. I think today's boom, boom will put it out of the children book category. <gasps> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Jason. Teaser. Jason. Is it rated R? We'll find <laughs> out. Okay. All right, let's get it going. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, today's Never Not Working segment. You know, every fantasy player needing to work a little harder, want to guarantee success, want to find opportunities. And uh, today we want to look at zero in on some red zone opportunities for running backs and wide receivers after six weeks. So it's a pretty good sample size. In fact, Matt DeSorbo from the website, uh, one of our uh, way smarter than us writers, 
wrote an article on sample sizes in fantasy football and talks about six games being a nice, reasonable sample size for projections, trends. And so we wanted to take a look at who's overperforming and underperforming around the goal line because, you know, it brings to mind Jason bringing up certain players, maybe it's Cooper Cup, but other players that, look, if they've already delivered you these kind of out-of-bounds performances to start the year and you trade them, for extremely high value, you know, the likelihood of them continuing something that is not relative to the averages over time is low. You know, it's not likely that some of these projections in the beginning of the year for Cooper Cup, he's not going to end up with 38 touchdowns or something what? like that. No, it's, it's not going to happen, Jay. Oh, that's a shame. And to be fair, he's only on pace for 20. No, oh, that's fine, actually. That might happen. <laughs> that might happen. But... When you, when you look at some players that overperformed, and what we're going to look at is basically what they are doing above expectation around the goal line. So on average, a red zone target for a wide receiver is worth 2.55 fantasy points. Um, a, a red zone opportunity for a running back is normally worth 1.43. So if a player is scoring above that, that's because they are – Beating expectations. They're so, converting more touchdowns than Targets to average. touchdowns, opportunities to touchdowns, yeah. So wide receivers that are overperforming right here, right now, DeAndre Hopkins is plus 2.03 fantasy points above expectations. Um, Ten red zone targets, six receptions for six touchdowns. So uh, every red zone targets ended up in the end zone, which obviously that's not always the case as well. Mm -hmm. You could – have a target from the 19 and catch it on the six. DK Metcalf is plus 3.77 fantasy points above expectation. Five red zone targets, four receptions, four touchdowns. He's got a quarterback situation right now. And then on the running back side, Cordero Patterson plus 1.47 fantasy points above expectation on yes, his opportunities. He is. Well, that's one we kind of knew. And then Austin Eckler is actually performing above expectation on his red zone opportunities. He's had a lot of them, 23 red zone opportunities. So there's more to the equation, I think, when you when you look at how they perform. Like, I won a guy that with 23 through six games. That being said, he's still scoring more points than expected on those touches. Yeah, and while the, the sample size article talked about um, that, that it is a good chunk of time and it – it's probably more often right than wrong as far as whether their trends will continue. The one place where it's not as sticky is the touchdowns. The, the outlier statistics, touchdowns, interceptions, those type of things are um, not as sticky. So that's why we're focusing on those. Where have they overperformed or underperformed um, in specific to, to that stat? Because that's where you could sell high or buy low. Um, like I, I would Any be of those fine. four names that you are selling high? Well, I don't think you could sell high on Metcalf, unfortunately, because of the... Sure. I, I would personally be willing to sell high on Cordero Patterson. That is not me saying that I think Cordero Patterson is not going to be a usable fantasy asset from the... You know, I don't... I think he is going to be someone that gets enough targets and enough carries to be fantasy relevant every week. And you can, you can definitely capitalize and get more for him than what I think his value Can is you? the rest of the way. Absolutely. I've seen I've seen trades where you package him together and get a Zeke level guy and Cordero is right there with him scoring on the season. Cordero will not be right there with him scoring with him the rest of the season. I, I think that's that's kind of the point of this exercise is to look and say, who are these guys that just it's just not it's not as good. It's not that it's a mirage. Uh, it's just that it's not going to be as good as it's, it's been. It's not going to be as good as it's been. Underperforming players, though. These are trade targets, really, potentially. Wide receiver-wise, Chris Godwin, Michael Pittman Jr., and Keenan Allen are under the fantasy points that would be expected by their opportunities in the red zone, the targets in the red zone. Um I mean, God Chris Godwin has 13 red zone targets and only two touchdowns. That's the most red zone targets in the NFL. And now there's there's talk today about like Antonio Brown is extremely iffy to play this upcoming week, and so you you have a situation there where Godwin may capitalize this week. Keenan Allen's another one that's you know Keenan hasn't had a big game. Mm -mm, Keenan's just right. been kind of overshadowed. He yeah, is, he he is living in the very large shadow of Mike Williams. 
Keenan Allen is, I, I think, one of my favorite trade for targets because it's kind of like what I was saying about C.D. Lamb a couple weeks ago. The offense is great. Dak is great. C.D. Lamb is great. It's going to work out. Keenan is great. Like there's, yes. Keenan is just a great wide receiver. Herbert is great. The offense is great. It just has been going the other way. I, I think that uh, Keenan is a great trade for target. And then running backs that have had a lot of opportunities in the red zone but are still scoring fantasy points below expectation, Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, and Miles Sanders, which might surprise people, the first two names, because Taylor's been great over the last couple of weeks, but he only has three touchdowns and 31 red zone opportunities. He's had big plays outside the red zone, but and he's returning to the mean over the last couple of weeks, but he is still a player that you can target, and maybe this stat here in Never Not Working is – your confidence boost that what you've seen the last couple of weeks is sustainable, right? Like the performances, the the fantasy value, and then Najee Harris as well. That you know, Najee's is just going to stick around, though. We kind of knew, like we would know that he would perform under the expectation because his team stinks and his offensive line stinks. You know what I mean? It's the sure. it's the opportunities he's getting that are phenomenal. He'll keep doing what he's been doing. Whereas Jonathan Taylor, I think he's you you would expect more efficiency in the red zone for Jonathan Taylor. I think we all came into this season going, Najee's going to get so much work, he probably will be a little bit inefficient with sure. it. And that's just what we've seen. <clears throat> a trade I've been trying to formulate in my head over here, because of the of the players who are overperforming, and again, these are – because we listed out uh, other than Patterson. Patterson's a surprise, but the other guys are elite players. But DeAndre Hopkins is very – this is a strange season. For DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, the Cardinals' offense is is top notch. I mean, they're putting up tons of points every single week. But DeAndre Hopkins is only seeing a twenty one percent target share, which is not bad. This is you don't have to get rid of Hopkins. But the question I have is, like, for he has multiple weeks here with four targets. Now he's happened to score in both of those weeks. But if he hadn't put up a touchdown and he's just four for fifty four or three for fifty five, then that's a that's a really down week. So would you take Hopkins and wait not this week because it's by apocalypse. Wait a week, be sneaky, and then go to the, the Stefan Diggs manager who is on his buy now, and then next week go, hey Straight up. Or not not even straight up. Like I bet you could trade Hopkins for Diggs plus just a little something on the side, maybe a, a, a running back three type of a player. And you're all, to me, you're making almost a lateral move at the wide receiver position. One of them is just overperforming, one is underperforming, and you, then get yourself a, a, a flex upgrade. This is revenge week for Hopkins against Houston. So you could probably do that. And, you could probably come off of this game where he, he's going to get his targets against his old team, heavily favored. Yeah, I mean, before the double touchdown week this last week, he was the wide receiver 16, which is – that that's good for fantasy, but mm -hmm. that's not what you drafted in Hopkins. Right. And and, and that was including him overperforming um, in the red zone. So, I agree, after this week, maybe looking to trade him, I would maybe package him with someone and look to upgrade at, clearly at the position, and that would be uh, Justin Jefferson. I would target Justin Jefferson, who will also be past his bye. You steal a bye week away, and and if I had to bet money on who has the better rest of the season, it would you. It would definitely be Jefferson. To that me. could be a like a. This is every league is different, but that could be legitimately a one for one trade if you were wanting to do that. Where like the people, uh, the sentiment on Justin Jefferson on social media is not fully reflective to, in my opinion of what Jefferson is actually doing on the field because you have these spike games from Adam Thielen happening uh, especially in recency bias you have Justin Jefferson had a wide receiver 34 performance heading into the bye week Adam Thielen had a monster game if Hopkins does crush his former team I think you could make that move and I would I would prefer Justin Jefferson rest of season and if the fact that you get the bye week out of the way that's an interesting opportunity. Yeah, the only the only doubt I would have is the fact that while he's over overperforming in the red zone, Hopkins is he is gener like he's got a long history of the targets being a little bit more significant, and the Cardinals have kind of beat people up 
And I just wonder if he'll return to the mean in the volume category and make it neutral. But if you're trading for a good player that you have confidence in, a Diggs, a Jefferson, I think that's fine. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Well, there's been a lot of Deshaun Watson trade buzz. Yesterday, John McClain of the Houston Chronicle came out, spread the newest rumor, uh, maybe a stronger rumor, about a trade intensifying between the Texans and the Miami Dolphins. The only reason it's stronger is because it's John McClain. John McClain is a very well-respected beat reporter for the Texans, so you assume that he has plugged-in information. But it is just it was just as strong a couple weeks ago when it was – reports uh, that deals are imminent. So I, I have a really, really hard time believing this one right now. The more time that has gone by and I've settled with this, doo -doo 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 -doo, yeah. it's imminent. The Dolphins are about to acquire him. I'm like, mm, yeah, wink. Well, I guess for our show, the purpose here is what actionable advice can we give based on these rumors? And I, I, I think that there is clearly... You know, we have a smoke fire segment on the show. There's been enough smoke for enough weeks about trading Watson that I believe serious conversations are happening. Now, whether this specific rumor is accurate or not, the Texans are having very intense conversations about Deshaun Watson. You've had too many beat reporters and, and, and people in the know reporting these rumors to say that nothing's happening. So... um you know, if you're if you're looking at the future, I certainly don't think Tua is a dynasty hold for Miami, and I don't. You yeah. know, it, it maybe it makes you think a little differently about Will Fuller in dynasty or something if he could stick around. And I know he's on a one year deal, but you know, are you going to go out and pick up Deshaun Watson? There's too many hurdles to take up a bench spot in Bipocalypse with Deshaun Watson when he may be traded and then may not start, and then a commissioner's exempt list and blah 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 like. It's probably just a distraction. Yeah, I, I think that he's worth uh, a, a waiver pickup if you happen to have a roster that has a free burnable spot. Um, if you've got the IR, I know that you know you can usually – I've picked him up previous in this season just because he was marked out for the game, and you could just move him to the IR and pick up another player. So there's strategy that can be had, and it costs you nothing. Um, but I would not make trades. I would not pay any kind of – capital for uh Jalen Waddle right now in anticipation of something um I, I, again I think it's more smoke than fire but obviously it's news that Footland needs to be aware of because should he be traded and be activated it's going to be very fantasy relevant and it, it turned into a larger discussion of you know, like more rumors more smoke coming out of well maybe the maybe Washington is involved and Washington's going to end up with Tua and Miami's going to get Watson and like or and then Denver, Denver and Denver was a player I inside of this and it's it's wild when this is happening because these are like these are plugged in beat reporters these are people who are not just throwing out hot takes for for the lulls and the clicks that's not what they do but then you had well, several, San Francisco then you, sure yeah sure they, they're the worst but then you had more beat reporters come out like Washington beat reporters. Uh, this is there's nothing to this. They are not talking to Flo uh, to Miami it's about a rumor Tua. fight. It, yeah, it it is. It's turned into a full rumor fight, which is I don't know. It's kind of entertaining. <laughs> yeah, to, to see these people like is is McLean just getting leaked information from the Houston Texans trying to who are yeah. they're trying to start something. They're, they're trying to tell the Eagles he's yes. about to go to the Dolphins. You better hurry up. <laughs> That's why I'm just waiting. Yeah, yeah. That's probably all we need to say about that. Thursday night football updates. Teddy Bridgewater is going to play. OBJ not expected to play. This was the the bigger news this morning. Jarvis Landry, they're expecting him to be activated before oh, really? 4, before 4 p.m. Uh, if Landry's activated and playing, I am full pivoting from Donovan Peoples-Jones. I do not trust a backup quarterback to sustain a second option in the offense. Um, so that's just what I'm doing. I'm doing that literally in my league. I'm not going to... Uh, play Peoples Jones if Landry is out there. Uh, they Would you are play Landry. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Um, 
Jedrick Wills expected to be back out there. Brown's left tackle. Yeah, but uh, Jack Conklin won't be able to go. Tyrod's not coming back yet, so Davis Mills will start against the Cardinals. Uh, say a prayer for Davis Mills. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo looking good to start Sunday. T uh, Trey Lance will not be available. Mm -hmm. And then this was big news, too. Like, Antonio Brown, he hurt his ankle during the game and came back in. Eh, you miss Wednesday practice. Okay, whatever. Give him an off day. He missed Thursday. Gronkowski missed as well. And, and, and now they're officially iffy for the Sunday game against the Bears. You might need to make plans or at least have a pivot option for A.B. Yeah, Gronk's running on the sideline, but again, he's got the broken ribs. I, you can run and you can't get hit. So uh, I, I'm, I'm planning to be without Gronk. Antonio Brown, this is one where you might say, oh, he came back in after the injury, but we've seen this several times. People that roll their ankle, they could tape it up, they can go, and then once the rest comes – once they're not the they football, up. it swells and they're unable to go. So he's he is a true monitor situation. But I do think, man, if if him and and Gronk are out, Godwin and Evans are just such strong plays. Not that you wouldn't play them already, uh, but maybe in your DFS lineups, paying up. Yep, OJ Howard returned to practice too. That was one of those things where, if he was out and Gronk was out and Brown was out, like Brait would be a desperation sure. play. Samaj P. Ryan activated from the COVID list, and Dallas Goddard is back from the COVID list. Let's go, Dallas. Uh, he will be. It's your time, buddy. Targeted a lot from Jalen Hurts. The first part of what you said was good. The <laughs> second part of what you said was bad. <laughs> uh, Damian Williams still on the COVID list, so I don't know if that's an indication that wow. you know, we're just a day behind with his report from last week, or if he could potentially miss another week. It's so up in the air with symptomatic versus non-symptomatic. Yeah, you got to get two uh, negative tests 24 hours apart, and if he's not getting them, then he's not getting off the list. My pivot for Mr. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones was I'm going to pivot to Michael Hardman. Okay. okay. I like it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I think that's it for news. Uh, as always, brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the Sleeper app, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download the app, join the channel, bing, bang, boom, free alerts. And we want to thank today's sponsors, Mint Mobile. After years of all the fine print contracts getting ripped off by Big Wireless. Big Wireless. Stupid Big Wireless. Big if wireless. we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. And so when we first heard about Mint Mobile offering premium wireless service at just 15 bucks a month, it was like, okay, what's the catch? But. We've spoke to them. We've used the service. We've it's super signed up. easy. It's it, crazy easy. Yeah, they, they, they cut out the middleman. It is online only. By cutting out the retail stores, there's no crazy overhead. The, the costs get passed down to you uh, instead of mystery fees. And so uh, you, you just get... The savings, not the costs. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. yes, yes. The, co the costs yes. that they were pro providing, paying for all, all that junk of the middleman. Um, but if you're looking for extra savings, I mean, we, Andy, I know you just signed your, your son They up. send you a SIM card, you plug it in, you activate it online, and you're up and running with a phone number. Yeah, it's like, it, it's 15 bucks a month. It's super cheap. Really high quality. It's delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with Mint Mobile. Keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, they have you covered with a seven-day money-back guarantee to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash footballers. That's mintmobile.com slash footballers. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash footballers. Folk we want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. The best men's grooming products available. The best body hair trimmer out there. Longtime supporter of this show. Fellas. There's 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. And you can get, get great deals if you use our code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. We're talking about 20% off and free shipping. The world is starting to open. The Performance Package 4.0 for Manscaped. They're here to help you get ready with their brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. The best body hair trimmer on the market. And they got other tools for you too. The Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. There's deodorants. There's toners. And you get two free gifts, performance boxer briefs and the Shed Travel Bag. Look, the, the, uh, the brand new Lawnmower 4.0, it's here to take 
you to the next level. It's a fourth generation trimmer. It features cutting edge ceramic blade technology that's used to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It's got a 7,000 RPM motor. A new multifunction on-off switch can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn your 4,000K LED spotlight on and off whenever you need that light for a more precise shave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Fantasy Forecast. Well, let's jump right in. We did the Thursday night preview on yesterday's show, so we do have football tonight. If you want that breakdown, you can go listen to that. Let's start here. The Washington football team at 2-4 and four, traveling to Lambeau to take on the Green Bay Packers at 5-1. and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Packers minus 7.5. The over-under is 48.5. Gives the Packers 28 points and the Washington football team 20 points. You know, on the surface, Washington, they were up against it to begin with. Now you have injuries. Mm -hmm. You have Antonio Gibson, who we have had no report on the MRI, which, honestly, that's probably a good sign. You think? Yeah, because if you have something definitive that's going to declare him out, needs surgery, needs him out on IR, that stuff would have happened by now. Yeah, teams love giving that information out. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. But, yeah, you make roster moves when that happens in association with the injury and then you plan for other players. He didn't practice Wednesday. Brooks, if you hear anything on Gibson by the end of the show, I give you permission to buzz in. Likewise, and, uh, likewise, Terry McLaurin, who yeah. uh, obviously didn't look the same last week. There was questions whether he'd play. He did, but poorly, and now he didn't practice Wednesday. We will be monitoring today's practice report for the Washington football team because I, I'll tell you what, if you don't have Gibson and you don't have McLaurin, bail out, man. <laughs> but what if you have a, a, a very – injured Ricky Seals Jones as well because he didn't practice due to a quad injury. Or oh, 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 oh. wait, was that an injured that was seal? Oh, yes, that That's was an injured sad. seal. It was very, very sad. You could tell that oh. that seal had a slight issue with his quadricep muscle. That is one hundred percent what the muscle was. <laughs> Which obviously seal seals have <laughs> Oh yeah. They've got quads down the left and right dorsal. <laughs> yeah. Um is there a sneaky play if some of these guys sit? It's J.D. McKissick. It's, yeah, J.D. McKissick is – I think J.D. McKissick is a, is a solid play no matter what. If Gibson plays, okay. And McKissick will likely see an uptick in usage. It's hard to see a world where the Green Bay Packers are not leading for most of this game. They're you know over a touchdown favorite. So McKissick will have to play his role of being the pass-catching running back and, and help catch up. Ricky's All right, Al, you can hit the button. <laughs> that was way too fast. He was ready. Uh, and despite him not practicing on Wednesday, I'm hoping that's just a day of rest for Ricky Seals-Jones, but he's still a very strong tight end streaming type of an option. Yeah, I would agree. That's the end of the list for the Washington football team. I'm not getting cute with the other wide receivers. You know, we try to do that with a very cheap DFS option when DeAndre Carter, but De'Ami Brown was back. I'm just avoiding anybody else from the Washington football team outside of those two players. The real question uh, where my eyes will be watching on, on this game is going to be A.J. Dillon. His involvement, sure. you know, we talked about kind of some of the, the reasons why his involvement seemed to be possibly inflated, big leads, getting a lot of work in the fourth quarter, but it's three games in a row where he's had enough opportunity where you could have started him the last three weeks and not been destroyed. Um, last week, 11 carries didn't turn into much, but two solid fantasy weeks the week weeks before. I'm not – I mean, that's like a desperation by Apocalypse. Okay, I've got to start him. So you could you could throw him in there, and, and this seems like a matchup where it could work out. You could be up by a ton and get more fourth quarter run. But what I'm really curious about is first quarter. Sec what is the split here looking like? Um, from the get-go, are they just getting him more and more involved? Um, I'll be watching for that. And he's, he's, I think, the only other questionable start. Maybe, maybe we're st are we still dabbling with Robert Tunyon? No. no, no, not until he proves it over multiple. He needs to go boom shakalaka. He needs to have some good weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. The Dylan analysis was spot on. He, he is a top five runner according to Pro Football Focus's. 
Uh, running grades, which, by the way, Joe Mixon is the like highest graded um, of the main running backs right now. But Dylan, th- double-digit opportunities, you got to bring that up. Adams is in. Rodgers, of course. Crazy thing about Adams, and not that you need to spend a lot of time about him. But so, Was that a quasi? Was it? It's Who Adam. knows? Al? Who knows? Could have been. I heard quasi. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, you know, cool. <laughs> um, uh, he is underperforming. And you might say, well, Mike, he's he's the wide receiver four. <laughs> yeah, and he's underperforming. He has two touchdowns to go with his nearly 700 receiving yards. Devontae Adams, like, against Washington? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is, Him and Rodgers should be uh, quite the pair this week. The Kansas City Chiefs at 3-3 three and three play the Tennessee Titans, who are 4-2. and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Chiefs minus five and a half. The over-under is a spectacular, wonderful, amazing, incredible. Oh, what? Baby! 58 points. Yes. When I heard about this matchup, I was I was guessing it'd be around 60. It's almost there. Implied point totals, 31.8 for the Chiefs, 26.3 for the Titans. Titans with the huge, huge win against Buffalo on Monday night, so short week. But, I mean, these are two defenses that are not good statistically. Um, the Chiefs, we know their struggles. They're giving up a ton of points to fantasy quarterbacks and fantasy tight ends and uh, every position, really. And then the Titans doing the same thing. They're dead last against wide receivers. So Tyreek Hill, yes. McCole Hardman. Sure. McCole Hardman feels like a stronger play this week for multiple reasons. One, he's been more involved. Two, Tyreek has left the field due to injury. He's missed some practices. Didn't play on Wednesday for the, with the quad. Probably just being managed. But, you know, the the DB matchups right now, what was it, Jackrabbit? Yep. Um, when did that happen? When did he become, did he become awful? When, no, no, no. When did he become Jackrabbit? Is that, I, I is that like something forever. you do on purpose or is this something that happens to you? <laughs> I feel like he's been Jackrabbit for a long time. I, I don't remember hearing announcers refer to him as this, hmm. though. Like it, it could have been his nickname for a long time, but I, it just is. I don't know. It caught me off guard. Brooks is saying, "Who is that?" Janoris Jenkins. Yes. Yeah, is it? Oh, cool. Thank you. Cornerback for uh, Tennessee. I used the term cornerback loosely, but see, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's that's what I mean, Brooks. Like we all, I say the name Janoris Jenkins. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe it's like the hitman thing. Maybe, or I maybe. Of, <laughs> I think this is a guy who had to rebrand at the end of the, the end of the career. Teams aren't trying to sign Janoris Jenkins anymore. Are you happy to start uh, Daryl Williams? Yes. Yeah, I think he's he's a good play. Um, are he's a you, great play. Are you willing to start any other option on Kansas City? Not at, McKinnon. No. DeMarco. No. 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 I mean, Gordon had no targets last week, uh, so he's what did they say? Easing him in. Yeah, zero. Zero is a nice ease in. Ryan Tannehill, Mike's yep. start of the week. Yep, I still believe in the process despite them taking down Taylor Heineke. Ryan Tannehill's a much better quarterback. Probably not going to have Julio. So yeah. it'll be A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry. and that, So it's, it's, it's a Tennessee offense right. that we we're, we know and love. It's not like Julio was there last year. Correct. So, <laughs> I mean, unless you think Corey Davis is going to ruin this offense, I think they'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, obviously the the DraftKings line says that they expect them to be fine offensively speaking as well. It's really not fair that the Titans had to play the Bills and then the Chiefs. <laughs> That's just yeah, mean. and they're at home and they can win it. I mean, the, they can. Derrick Henry is the number one scoring player in fantasy over every quarterback. Did you know that? He I did not. He has more rushing touchdowns than the Packers, Vikings, Steelers, Panthers, and Saints combined. No, he does no, not. No, say that again out loud. They're running backs, yeah. Say it again out loud. <laughs> More <laughs> rushing touchdowns. He has mm-hmm. 10 than the Packers, Vikings, Steelers, Panthers, Saints running backs combined. But that includes Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, and Aaron Jones. And, and, and Najee Harris. <laughs> and, and Christian McCaffrey. Oh, <laughs> sheesh. That's so, ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> you basically say before the season – Hey, you get Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, Najee Harris, CMC, and Alvin Kamara, and I get the Yeti, and we see who wins in touchdowns. And the Yeti wins. Incredible. Now, it's not going to stop this week. Should, no. Shouldn't that, <laughs> like, 
No, nope. Derrick Henry's nope. always been the outlier, right? Like he's always. I don't want a guy that doesn't catch passes other than Derrick Henry. Like he's always been the outlier. But we were talking about this with Cooper Cup making the jokes. I mean, is is Derrick Henry going to is he going to score thirty touchdowns? He's on pace for twenty eight point three touchdowns. He might. He might. And and the thing is, is he does not submit to statistical analysis. No, he does not. He says. Pass. <laughs> yes, that's all he says. <laughs> all right. The um, any any other players from this game you want to talk about is Ferkser a desperation play? Des the desperation, more like a DFS desperation. But I mean, the Chiefs are at least they're twenty eighth against fantasy tight ends, and if Julio Jones is out, maybe Ferkser comes down with a touchdown. My first lineup I made again for tomorrow's show did have Ferkser in there, only thirty one hundred, but I I have since pivoted. The Atlanta Falcons at two and three take on the Miami Dolphins at one and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Falcons minus two and a half on the road. That's you know tells you everything you need to know about where the Dolphins are at right now. The yeah. over under is forty seven points. The Dolphins defense has been horrendous. You know we talk about Washington regressing. The Dolphins are awful. I mean twenty ninth against running backs and thirtieth against wide receivers. Those are the two biggest fantasy positions of relevance, and here you have. Calvin Ridley with a bounce back opportunity, or I guess not bounce back, but a, you know, he missed the game and he has a chance to finally meet uh, expectations. Yeah, I was going to say bounce back to last year because he's he's been super disappointing, but um, I, I don't know the current status of uh, Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. They were out last week. I think there'll be a down at least one of them, uh, but anytime that your, your two main cornerbacks are injured, that's good news for the other team's passing game. Oh, well, hello. I've got some breaking news for you. Oh. Ricky Seals-Jones returned to practice. Okay, good. This Antonio sounds... Gibson returned to practice. Okay. Wow. All right. All right. How about... You don't know how happy I am at the thought of not having to play <laughs> Mark Ingram at my running back position this week. So that means we should know Terry McLaurin? Terry's at practice as well. Okay. Oh, everybody's feeling good in Washington. That's fine. Uh, but they're not feeling good in, in New York because um, Barkley and Galladay and Tony didn't practice. So, okay. uh, Back to this matchup. Miles Gaskin, Landmine, keep him on your bench. Yes. Uh, Jalen Waddell, you chasing the 10 for 70 and 2. You can probably throw him out there, right? Yeah, I, I, I think so, especially if uh, – I know this name will sound a little silly, but if Preston Williams also does not play – it really makes a difference. Last week, no Preston Williams, no Devontae Parker, no Wolf. Like, it, it was Jalen Waddell, that, it, like, end of list. So, um, if it's the same this week, I would chase those targets. Mike gesicki has been great. He's basically a wide he out. Has. He's basically a wide out for them. He's only lined up as an inline tight end 16 total times. Wow. They have been down a lot of wide receivers. That's a wide receiver, and he's the tight end eight on the year, and the Falcons' defense is not scary, so... Stay in the Yo, yes. in the flame. Who yep. has a better game? Mike Gesicki or, Pitts? or Kyle Pitts in this matchup? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be pretty close, I think. Pitts has been, you know, he's, he had the big game before the bye. Gesicki's been in the flames. Do you go with the favorite in it? I don't know. It's going to be close. I'll Who take, do you think? I'll take Pitts. I'll take Gesicki. Well, now I have to decide. Yep. Well, this is just Jason always bets against Pitts. Yeah, that's never going to change, is it? No, that's definitely going to change. For sure going to change. I love Kyle Pitts, but he's still a rookie, and that's I guess a reality. I'll, I guess I'll piggyback the big game and lean the Pitts side, but both are going to have solid weeks. Ridley's great. Start of the week for Jason. Cordero, set him up. I, he is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. He is a wide receiver and a running back, and he gets opportunities in both areas. Seven to ten carries, seven to ten targets. Mike Davis, though, what do you do with Mike Davis this week? You're in a bipocalypse. You probably just have to put him out there. Yes, and, you do. And then Matt Ryan's my start of the week. So start him. Five straight losses for the Dolphins. They're averaging 16.5 points per game. And Deshaun Watson could be on the way. Yeah, I, I think when you lose to the – what could have heated up the trade rumors is – when you lose to the Jaguars, mm. you, and two of I mean, two have played great, but you you still lost to the Jaguars, and management I think is unhappy about that. Yes, not content, especially when you go, you, you almost feel the pressure of. You remember when the Seventy Sixers trusted the process? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, I feel like there's a trust the process to happen in Miami. And when you invest time and money and draft capital and head coach, and then you don't get the return mm -hmm. this year, there's a desperation that might cause you to trade for a guy with 22 uh, accusations against him mm -hmm. at the quarterback position. Um, but we'll move on here. The Jets well, take – Hold on. So Mike Davis, would you play Mike Davis or would you play Melvin Gordon tonight? Melvin Gordon is, I mean, a little bit banged up. I will take the juicy 29th ranked Dolphins defensive matchup and go Mike Davis. Yeah, Mike, I, I lean that way as well. Mike Davis or Devontae Booker versus Carolina? I will go Mike Davis. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mike Davis or the gas man? Mike Davis. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, what, what's the problem with uh, Booker is, is we saw Elijah Penny around the goal line. Yeah. All right. Permission to move on? Yep. The Jets at one and four taking on oh, the new never mind, go back. <laughs> Was okay. this Jets Patriots? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, Jets Patriots. Permission denied. The one and four Jets against the two and four <laughs> Patriots. Uh whoopsies. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Patriots minus seven. The over under is forty three. It's a little bit humorous because the Patriots look like the best defense you could possibly play this week at home. But they also looked that way against the Houston Texans two weeks ago when Davis Mills found a way. So that doesn't really change anything for me. I mean, the Patriots, i they're going to win the game, right? Yes, I mean, they're going to win the game, and they're going to do it on the ground. The New York Jets, we have seen this, and this is something I want to uh, bring up because the, the last several years we've seen several teams that are basement-dwelling bottom teams that their defense is not good and they don't give up a lot of points to the quarterback or the wide receiver. The passing game does not hurt them. And you think, well, eventually these pa these guys are going to be able to just pass all over them because their defense is not good. But the reality is if a team is really, really, really bad, you can run on them. Then you're in the lead. Then you just keep running on them. And the passing game doesn't work out. And that's what the Jets are. The Jets are 31st against fantasy running backs. They, they give up 28.7 fantasy points per game and half point scoring to the running back. And they shut down quarterbacks and, and wide <laughs> receivers. They don't shut them down. They just are unnecessary. Um, this is why I think I think Damian Harris is a phenomenal play, and Agreed. I think you can start Ramondre Stevenson in this same game. I think both guys are going to have – Kenyon Drake or Ramondre? Ooh, I like, I, like, I like both. I think I would lean Ramondre just because Ramondre, I think, has a better shot at getting 10 to 12 touches versus Drake getting kind of like 6 to 8. What about Mark Ingram with 16 and 18 touches? You know you're going to get that. But it's going to be bad. Yeah, I don't want 16 touches for 12 yards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was, he was actually pretty good last week, but you'd go I, I would, you'd go, I would go Ramondre here, yeah. I am so afraid of being set up. Oh, it's... By Bill. Easy. I mean, it's almost Halloween. <laughs> right. It's, it could be a trick. He's almost in full form. The moon is full. Uh, is that a werewolf, Bill Belichick? Yeah, I, I mean, I, mean I was searching. It was, it was just bringing in the October <laughs> Halloween thing. Okay, I mean, it's good. Just say more things about Halloween out loud. Yeah, sure. Go. Uh, look, Frankenstein's You want to know who's going to be a real pumpkin out there? It's going to be Jacoby Myers. Um, is this the week he gets touchdown? See, I could I can make the pumpkin joke with Jacoby Myers because it's like he got in the end zone last week, mm -hmm. but the clock struck, struck yeah. 12, mm. and he turned back into... Uh, so less of a Halloween pumpkin, more of a Cinderella oh, pumpkin. That, yeah, it is a Cinderella pumpkin. <laughs> okay. This is the kind We're of hard, fire the hard hitting people. analysis that you get here on the fantasy footballers. <laughs> um, Jacoby Myers, 8.7 targets a game. Sign me up for that. But otherwise, you know, it's Hunter Henry. If you want to stay in the flames, three straight top 12 weeks. He's still at the bottom of the barrel, right? Uh, of the tight end yeah. one. Zach Ertz yeah. or Hunter Henry? Zach Ertz. Ertz. Well, that was so fast. It's so easy. Remember how it was not so fast for you to say that about Zach Ertz? Yeah, when he's splitting with another tight end and a terrible quarterback, it's very easy to say not Zach Ertz, and yet he was still okay. Um, and, I, I mean, we shouldn't speak about fast or speed when we're talking about Zach Ertz here, but uh, I do think he's a good play. He is athletically superior to Max Williams, and Max Williams was fine. So that's a good point. Can you, I, I thought you were going to say we shouldn't speak about the Jets. Can you play a single Jet? Uh, in a pinch, maybe you could throw in a Corey Davis, a Jamison Crowder. I don't want to. Maybe you could throw in a Michael Carter if you absolutely have to. I don't want to. I would 
rather have the Jacoby Myers and the Ramondre Stevensons than the starter uh, best options on, on the Jets' side of the ball. Personally. Corey Davis or Tyler Lockett against the Saints? I, I would go, I would go to Tyler Lockett. I, I know his floor is nothing, but Tyler Lockett could take one big play to the house. Corey Davis or Allen Robinson against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? <laughs> Allen Robinson. I would go Allen Robinson as well. Okay, For and then sure. let's go Corey Davis or Tyler Boyd against the Baltimore Ravens. Tyler Boyd. Yeah, that one's I, – I see them similarly. I, I, I'm fine with Tyler Boyd. I have no confidence in Corey Davis this week. No. Yeah, no. None I mean, I, I don't blame you. I Honestly, you should be trying to not have any Jets. Not like not play them. Just, Just not, not even have them not on your roster. roster. Yeah, my, Michael Carter has I'm had double-digit touches, and he's ended up with 38 rushing yards in two consecutive weeks. 38. So if yeah. he doesn't fall into the end zone on the 38 carries, he's irrelevant. Um, Michael Carter or Mark Ingram? Michael Carter. Wrong. Okay, you Mark leave, Ingram, thank no, you. You leave the league. <laughs> Yo, oh, you good, leave good. the league if yeah. you're facing that decision. Graceful departure. Uh, the Carolina Panthers at 3-3. Three and three. Take on the New York Jets, who are one and five, or I'm sorry, the New York Giants, who are one and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Panthers minus three. The over/under is forty-two and a half. Ooh. Andy's almost upset of the week. I'm gonna. I mean, is this because of your love for what you've seen out of Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay? The players not playing in this game, right? No, I mean the Panthers are just not playing good football. The Giants are home. They're somehow not favored, probably because they have no players left. I mean, not really the kind of upset I like picking, betting with the Giants, but from a fantasy perspective, this game only has a 42-and-a-half point over under. You know, both teams are going to be around 20 points in this game. It's like Daniel Jones and Sam Darnold, who turns the ball over more, lo that team loses. And they're both going to do it a minimum of, what, two or three times the way that they're playing. So, you know, Chuba Hubbard has a nice matchup. Yeah, there's there's still pieces in this game. I, I think this game is, is not nearly as gross as the uh, the, the, the Patriots-Jets because Chuba is a, a strong play. We've seen how much work he's getting in replacement of Christian McCaffrey. And he, look, he looks fine. I, he, I, he's not... Clearly, he's not McCaffrey, but I, he looks like a he belongs on on an NFL field. Still, as the track speed can hit uh, hit the home run. Can and I bring up a question about DJ Moore? Yes, please. Because we've made a you know you made a lot of comments about Droppy e. Anderson, mm -hmm. but you know DJ Moore had 13 targets last week. He only yep. caught five of them. Is this speaking more? You know those those targets, the catches, and is that speaking more about Sam Darnold having issues than it does these wide receivers? If you're targeting Robbie Anderson 11 times and and you're targeting DJ Moore 13 times and you're ending up with a handful of catches. Yeah, I have always wondered like how much of <laughs> you know it's like when these quarterbacks constantly deal with drops, it, is there something they're doing <laughs> is there, are they hitting people in a weird spot or uh, something like that? That being said, um last week was a very bad week for DJ Moore and he was 5 for 73. So that's not going to crush you. It's not going to kill you. We have enough great weeks on the season. DJ Moore's in my lineup. Um, His catch rate over the first uh, five games was 70%, and that dropped down to 38%. So even with – this was a just a perfect storm of uh, – if I remember right, DJ Moore had just a uh, – he also had a nasty drop. You have the weekly Sam Darnold misses DJ Moore for a, a house call. And they just they all happen to strike on this week. Do you guys like Carolina in this game? Do you like DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson as potential like is Robbie a start on this Bipocalypse week? Yeah, Robbie is. I know that last week was just unbelievably bad. Granted he got a touchdown on his one reception for you, eleven yards on eleven targets. Which how do you have eleven targets and eleven yards. You drop half of them and half of them aren't aren't great. But the the fact the fact that he got eleven targets um, I don't think Terrace Marshall's going to be here. We know Christian McCaffrey's not going to be there. He is a big part of this offense. A part of the reason that, that this offense was not good last week was Robbie Anderson's fault. And Robbie Anderson 
it's not like once a guy starts dropping passes, like he doesn't ever catch the ball again. Deontay Johnson was benched last year for drops. Mm -hmm. He's been great this year. Marquise Brown had the dropocalypse a couple weeks ago, and then he comes back. And a lot of apocalypses happened. Oh, today. yeah. Um, and then he was great. Robbie Anderson is getting the targets. He's a good wide receiver, uh, usually, and I, I think. Uh, call Hardman he, or Robbie. That's a really, really fair and good comp. I think I, go I would Robbie. go Robbie for the targets, yes. Okay. All right. And then Shepard is in play on the other side of the ball. Oh, yeah. Should we do starts now, Brooks? Let's do it. Starts of the week. Now I feel like when you mentioned Shepard, it reminded me that Darius Slayton was back at practice. So we talked about 11 targets for Dante Pettis. If Slayton's back out there and Pettis is out there, Shepard's the only guy that you can look to, right? Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, Slayton in deep leagues. I mean, we can run a couple names. Like, so Darius Slayton or? That's Carolina defense. Yeah. yeah. Which the, they've been bad. I'm the curious what name weeks. you're going to give me that I will okay. choose Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton or <clears throat> Jamison Crowder. Jamison Crowder. Darius Slayton or Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson. I think Van Jefferson and Darius Slayton are pretty similar. You're Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore. Brandon Ayuk. Rondell Moore. Brandon Ayuk. Okay. All right. Starts of the week time. Matt Ryan at Miami. Yep. It's my quarterback start of the week. Coming off the bye, Calvin Ridley's back in action. Defense for Miami. We talked about it. They're going nowhere, and they've given up. They're tied for giving up the most 20-plus yard completions. We need to see that from Calvin Ridley. We need him to find that painted end zone again. And uh, Matt Ryan is uh, rising. I think we've seen competence yeah, and last couple of weeks. fluidity. He's averaging 41 pass attempts per game. That's the Matt Ryan we know and love. And 83% uh, of their touchdowns have come through the pass. That's the highest in the NFL. Calvin Ridley, it's time to eat. Mm, I hope you're right about that second part. My quarterback this week uh, is Matthew Stafford. This is an actual revenge game narrative that means something. And that's not why I'm starting him. I'm not starting him because you of the revenge game. You wasted my career. Uh, but he's he's playing against Detroit, and Detroit is really, really bad. They're a, they're a laughable defense, and uh, some of that's not their fault. They've literally had like their starting corners start this year all injured. So um, they have been one of those teams where you can run on them. And eventually you have a lead, and so you don't necessarily go hog wild in the passing game. But I would not doubt if when they're down near the goal line, they want to do that little tap pass or get get Matthew Stafford out of this game with four or five passing touchdowns. There is revenge there, and, and honestly, he's just been great. Uh, he has the highest points per pass attempt in the NFL, the third most 20-plus completions, and the Rams have a nearly 33-point team implied total, so Stafford's a smash play. And mine is, uh, we mentioned earlier, but it's Ryan Tannehill. Kansas City had given up a month straight of top seven quarterbacks before we had a stinky Heine. Oh, mm, that's true. Yes, we did. Yeah. Well done. Oh, you man, gotta, you gotta, I am a fan of that one. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. We got a we got a bidet. We got to wipe oh, away. Oh, no. Move on. And look, uh, this is just this is trust the process. Ryan Tannehill is a good quarterback. The Kansas City defense – they didn't figure it out. They were they just happened to be able to stop Tyler Taylor Heineke. All right, I mentioned it as well. Chuba Hubbard at New York is my start of the week at the running back position. Matt Rule came out disgruntled, frustrated, saying he wanted to get back to running the football after this past week where he watched those, too much Sam Darnold. Yeah, in three starts, Chuba has th sixty touches. What what more do you want? A, a bad defense and a player that gets opportunities. And a coach who said we're going to establish it. Yeah, and the Giants, are they're allowing 137 rushing yards per game, fifth most in the NFL. I hope Chuba gets some targets as well. That's really the secret sauce there. But that would be, help Sam Darnold throwing the ball near the line of scrimmage to Chuba. He can get that done, so I'm going to make him my start. Uh, I'm going to have Damian Harris as my start of the week. I talked about him in the matchup. I, I think he's great. Last week, he said sayonara to Uncle Bill's doghouse. He had 18 for 101 and one. Uh, he's at home, home against the Jets. The Jets are allowing the most fantasy points to opposing running backs and the highest percentage of opponents touchdowns on the ground. Damian Harris has seven carries inside the five. The rest of the team has two. So I expect... I expect 100 yards and a touchdown from Damian Harris this week. I'm going James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals. The The Cardinals are 
More than two touchdown favorites against the Houston Texans. Chase Edmonds, clearly still not 100%. You saw uh, a couple weeks ago, we weren't even sure if he would play. Came in, ineffective, limited touches. The following week, a drop in snap percentage and still not back to Chase Edmonds uh, to what he needs to be. And this team can beat Houston without having to feed Chase. I think there's massive touchdown upside here. James Conner has eight carries inside the five which is actually, that's tied with the Yeti. He's not the Yeti, certainly, but I think there is a, a strong chance for a touchdown here, maybe even two. Wide receiver start of the week. Oh, oh, oh. Man, man, man. Debo Samuel against Indianapolis off the bye. Let's call on a real man, Debo. 36% target share on the season. That's, that's preposterous. Colts are allowing the highest pass success rate in the NFL. It's time to get back to Debo and Jimmy G is going to be out there. So we know who he likes throwing the ball to 36% of the time. No Kittle too. Uh, I thought you were saying no kidding, but you oh, said no yeah. Kittle. Both, it's true. Both. All right. So Debo's my start of the week. And I'm going with the stack on your Matt Ryan argument with Calvin Ridley. He's back. The Falcons are fresh off the bye. Uh, last week, Miami had both their cornerbacks out, and even before that, they were giving up tons in the passing game. So I, I think Calvin Ridley is someone that you could target in a trade. He's passed his by. Um, he's going to have a, a a great week, and I'm better do it now. I'm yeah, exactly. Better do it now because after this week, people are going to be like, "Oh yeah, maybe Ridley's back," and he probably will be. And I am going with Brandon Cooks. Arizona, they are giving up fantasy points to the wide receivers. Uh, it, look, in the last five weeks, only San Francisco and Trey Lance could not find wide receiver fantasy points to go around. Everyone else playing this team has. And Brandon Cooks, in the right matchups, has been successful. So I think that he is, or he, that he should be locked into your starting lineup. That leaves us with a tight end, and I'm going to go with Dallas Goddard. Good air. Good it's, air. It's your time, Dallas. It is. He takes on the Raiders, and um, they're the fourth highest target share given up to opposing tight ends in the NFL. Dallas Goddard, Mike said it best. It's your time. You're getting all the targets. Zacherts was heavily involved. Goddard's going to get the goal line. Goddard's going to get it, all the little dump-offs that we've been seeing. He's trying to earn that money now, too. And the Raiders have given up the most fantasy points to tight ends over the last month. Huge game to Gesicki. Huge game to Jared Cook. Huge game to Noah Fant last week. Mm -hmm. So Goddard, uh, he's as much of a smash play at that, this position that, that you can get. Yeah, you know who's uh, given up more Fantasy points than them on the season. The Texans, and I'm going with Zach Ertz oh, against my the goodness. Texans. So Goddard makes it start of the Goddard's week. Goddard makes it start of the week. They're back. You separate them, and their powers separated uh, are stronger. So um, the Cardinals have the second highest <laughs> success rate say. targeting the tight end position in the NFL. If you look at the targets that the Texans have allowed, you had James O'Shaughnessy with eight, the Browns tight ends with 11, Dawson Knox with eight, Hunter Henry with eight. Last week, Mo Ali Cox cut a touchdown. I think Zach Gertz on a much better offense with a much better quarterback in a much better matchup is someone that should be started. Uh, I think I've seen leagues where you know you pick Zach Ertz up because of the news, and you can flex him. We don't usually play two tight ends, but Zach Ertz, I think, is a kind of an anomaly because of the trade situation. He should be a good play this week. And uh, it's tight end time. I'm trying to bring you another streaming option who I think could come through in very deep leagues. You mean like Mo Ali Cox last it, week? Mo Ali Cox, the deep cut. Yeah, and this week it's Cole Komet. Chicago Bears, they are taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I un I can hear it. I can hear the world out there going, what? Yeah, I, I was a little uncomfortable. Cole commit. Look, Tampa Bay has given up top 12 points to the fantasy or to the tight end position every single week except for last one because you have to throw on them so much. That's Chicago, why I like Robinson. Chicago are crazy heavy underdogs. And lost in everything that's happened since uh, Justin Fields took over, Cole Komet is seeing a 20% target share over the last month. So if you are desperate, I mean, maybe this is just a DFS play, but if you're desperate, I think that Cole Komet is going to see enough volume that you go, oh, well, that, that, that didn't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Which sometimes is all you need a tight end on a bye week. You just want to survive. All right, Jason. 
Let's <clears throat> continue the narrative. Me, me, me. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. I leapt from the plane, parachuting aboard a freighter. I landed without clothes, boasting of the Cardinals' Matt Prater. Okay, I have some Why questions. don't you have any clothes? Did well, you, were the clothes removed before you jumped, or oh, were they sh- well during the, the jump? Or was did the sky? Yeah, did you undress during the skydive, or was the wind so strong no, this and was, you had loose fitting clothes that they just blew okay, up? So you got to remember last week. Last week I was bare chested, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that that happened. And then this one was more of like you know you dive in the pool and you go, oh, oh no, yeah. that was a solid dive with the shorts. Yep. I jumped out of the plane head down. Okay. And so the, I see. the, they flew right the off. pants just went whoop, and now I'm on a freighter. I don't know what's going to happen next next week, but Matt uh, Prater's going to be – I can't wait. Yeah, Pr- oh, yeah, Prater stay is, tuned. I think Prater's my number one kicker this week. Oh, man. Um, Al Borland in the back, he wrote one thing into the Slack channel while you were talking, and he said, why are you naked, bro? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good question, and now uh, you've built suspense for next week because yeah. – The children's just books to be clear, getting wild. Just to be clear, you are naked on a freighter. That is true. With Matt Prater. That, well, no. no I, Matt Prater's kicking. I just kicking. believe in him. He's yeah. g- he's going to be still in uh, Arizona or Houston. I don't remember what the game is. Yeah, the uh, one injury update, they did activate Jarvis Landry. He's going to play tonight. I mean, you don't do that right now if he's not going to play. So And T.Y. Hilton did not practice again. So he's 50-50 for Sunday. <laughs> Wink. Yeah. Uh, Justin Field signed jersey at pristineauction.com. Our good friends, 78 bucks. You know, maybe you want to get on and get some of these young names yep. and get some of this memorabilia, this signed gear, all authentic. Dalton Schultz signed mini helmet, 50 bucks right now. Check it out, pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, and get a $10 credit. Any other news, Brooksy, that you got for us? We're caught up for now. How, were you uncomfortable with the rhymes? Are you doing okay with the story? I mean, do, are you in? Oh, I can't wait to see what happens next week. Yeah, okay. stay tuned. It's a real squid game situation, 144 <laughs> million people tuning in to figure out the boom boom the boom boom yeah <laughs> oh boy all right the rest <laughs> of the matchups on tomorrow's show check out join the foot.com if you want a bonus weekly episode we'll be recording the footcast today and get a bunch of premium perks see you tomorrow everybody goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.